Hey there, it's Laura here from makingcardsisun.com and today I'm here with a card for the brand new Winnie and Walter release, so let's get started. In today's video, I'll be using two brand new stamp sets from Winnie and Walter. This one is called the Welcome to the Family with Evelyn T Design stamp set and it's just an adorable stamp set filled with lots of cute critters and some fun coordinating sentiments. I'll also be using the brand new Sending You with Evelyn T stamp set to, um, to create a fun sentiment. So first I'll be lining up all of my stamps with my mini Misty tool. So I'm using some Kenson watercolor paper today and I'm using three of the magnets to hold the paper down and then I can just easily um, put all of those stamps or position all of those stamps on my piece of cardstock. So I'll be using the elephants and then I'll be using two sentiments from the Sending You stamp set. So you don't necessarily have to use a misty tool, you could just use separate acrylic blocks or a Fisker stamp press. I just used the misty in this case. Um, since I am stamping my images with archival jet black ink and my ink pad was dried out at that time, I had to get a new one and I got one in the meantime. Um, but since my ink pad was dried out, I wasn't able to stamp a nice solid uh, sentiment stamp so I had to um, ink up my stamp a couple of times in order to get a nice impression so as you can see I lifted up my misty tool and you don't really see it on camera but I saw it um, the sentiment wasn't just as solid so I had to ink it up again and then stamp it once more and that's just what I like about the misty tool since all of these stamps are in the same place so there's no need to um, lose time by repositioning the stamps again with acrylic blocks but again just use whatever works for you. So after I stamped uh, all of those pieces I'm going to be adhering my paper down to my craft mat with some painters tape because I'll be doing some watercoloring and I'm just going to adhere that down to prevent my paper from curling up. So you could also use some washi tape, I'm just using painter's tape in this case. Then I'm grabbing some clear water and uh, first I was picking out some of the distress inks that I'll be using. Um, as you can see I am using this piece of white laminated cardstock. I borrowed that idea from Christina Werner. She uses white laminated cardstock to press her distress ink pads onto and then you just have a clear view of what the color looks like on white paper. So I pressed down some uh, picked raspberry distress ink and now I'm using some clear water to add water to this piece of watercolor paper since that will make sure that the colors move and blend really easily and just really fast as well. So after I applied all of my water I'm going to start adding the color. Uh, I'll be using rainbow colors so I'm always adding really small amounts of color on my piece of paper and sometimes the color may seem a little bit pale but that's okay since I'll be doing a second layer. So after applying the picked raspberry I'm moving on to spice marmalade which is a nice bright orange color. So I'm mixing that with lots of water um, and then I'm using mustard seeds. I used squeezed lemonade at first but it was a little bit too pale in my opinion so I wanted a brighter yellow so I switched over to the um, mustard seed color. Then for the green I'm using mode lawn and I just wanted to mention that using distress inks for watercoloring is a really cheap and easy way to do watercoloring since these mini distress ink pads are just about three dollars which isn't a lot of money so you can do some really um, fun watercoloring with your distress inks. So I also added some cracked pistachio in some peacock feathers. I added some um, violets to my little palette over there but I didn't end up using it. I just, um, I just stopped with the peacock feathers. So I'm just going to apply that final color over there. Um, I mixed it with a lot of water since it's kind of a vibrant color and I just like to use a lot of water for my first layer just in case I mess 
something up so I can easily fix it when you mix it with a lot of water. So I'm going to heat set this first layer of paint. Um, you could just let that air dry, but I am kind of impatient, impatient so I just had to use my heat tool to uh, dry that color a little bit faster. Then I'm going to add my second and final layer of color. So sometimes I'm adding a little bit more color and I'm also adding some water to those edges just to make sure I'm not left with any harsh lines. I just want like some really um, soft water coloring at these edges. I don't want any harsh lines. So I'm adding an extra pop of color here and there just to get a little bit more of a bright look. And then once I was satisfied, I went ahead and heat set this whole piece to make sure it's completely dry before I move on to the next step. I'm just going to add a little bit more interest to this project by adding some splatters of water. So I just sprayed some water in on my hands and then I'm just spreading it around. I'm picking up all of those drops with a white cloth um, to clean it up immediately since I'm a really clean crafter and I don't want to mess at all. Um, so I just clean that up right away. Then I'm going to be coloring these elephants with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And it took me a while to figure out uh, which coloring technique with these markers were the best for me because I had a lot of trouble um, blending these colors at first. So I found that using just regular watercolor paper um, is the easiest to blend the colors. Then I like to add the color to my image um, with the marker, so I'm not using any water at first. I just add this color to dry cardstock. And then once I applied that shading um, with the gray marker, I added some uh, flesh color for the inside of those ears. And then finally, I blend that all out with a water brush. I'm using a pencil aquash brush, but you could just also use a regular paintbrush. So, um, after that step, I went back in with the light gray marker just to add a little bit extra shading here and there. And then you can just repeat all of those same steps. So you could um, do some more blending with the water or you could add even more color. You can just repeat all of these steps until you're happy and satisfied with your image. So after coloring and making sure that the elephants were completely dry, I am going to add some kitchen flour to this um, because I'll be doing some embossing. And I like to use kitchen flour um, to prevent any of that embossing powder sticking to areas where I don't want it to stick. So I'm using my Misty tool and I have to position my um, sentiment stamp again because I already uh, removed these from Misty and put them back in the packaging. So it's kind of easy since it's such a bold sentiment or a bold font. So I lined that up, I picked it up with my Misty tool and then I am inking that up with the WOW Ultra Sticky Pat. Um, so I'm going to stamp that and then I'm going to apply my favorite neutral ultra shimmer embossing powder from WOW. So this is just a clear glitter embossing powder and I just love to use this if I want to add some extra glitter or some extra dimension to my card since um, the embossing powder gives a raised look to your sentiment. Next, I am using um, a frame die from the Catherine Cutaways die cut set from Winnie and Walter. I'm using the largest stitched frame and I'm going to run that through my Big Shop machine. Then I'm going, I'm going to cut some fun foam with my Fiskars Sure Cut. Um, I like to use fun foam whenever I'm adhering like larger pieces of cardstock. And I'm also using fun foam since it adds a nice even layer. Um, my paper was a little bit warped from um, the water coloring even though I taped it down. So I just used some fun foam since that's just easier to make sure that the um, paper doesn't warp anymore. So I'm adhering that fun foam with my ATG from Scotch. I'm adding some adhesive to the back of my cardstock and then I can easily line that up with the fun foam. Obviously, you could also just use some regular um, foam squares if you would like to. I just use fun foam for today. Also adding some more adhesive to the fun foam and then I can adhere it onto a note card. This is a Hero Arts sealed on note card. 
And finally, it's time to finish off or to finish up this card. I'm adhering some enamel dots. I haven't used enamel dots in a really long time and I thought that these would look really nice with these cute little elephants. So I adhered a rainbow of enamel dots and I'm also going to adhere a couple of clear sequins here and there um, because I just couldn't resist adding a sequin. Um, at first I wanted to adhere rainbow colored sequins but then I decided to use enamel dots but I also really wanted to adhere some clear ones so <laughs> there you go. Um, oh yeah, I also um, adhered some little die-cut hearts from the uh, Audrey Cutaways die-cut set from Winnie & Walter and I just used that really tiny heart die to die-cut some glitter hearts out of some uh, glitter cardstock. So I also adhered those with some glossy accents and I'm adhering a, a couple more of those clear sequins with my tweezers. So. Yeah, so that finishes up this card for this video. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to visit my blog for more information about Winnie & Walter's release week and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye!